Welcome to Australian Road Rider. Today, I'm gonna to have a look at what we know about the new Multistrata V4. This is a very exciting motorcycle from Ducati. It looks absolutely perfect for conditions down in Australia, at least on paper and the videos they've released. Now, you can watch the 25 minute video that Ducati's released. Uh, it's been made in Italian and then dubbed into English, and there's a music track there. So, I actually found it quite annoying in that sense but it's definitely worth a look if you're very serious about the motorcycle. If you just want to know the highlights and how we think it'll fit into, into the scheme of things here in Australia, well, this is the video you're looking for. The Multistrada V4 is obviously a, a, going to be a very long-term bike for Ducati. Uh, it's, it's a groundbreaking model in many, many ways. And what I find really interesting off the bat is it's aimed more at the touring rider and even the off-road uh, adventure rider than it is the traditional um, machine that the old Multistrada was aimed at. And I say this because it's got a 19-inch front wheel. The, the older Multistratas, starting from the 1200, I can't even remember what the earlier ones had prior to that. I think they had 17s. But the 1200s that were released nearly 10 years ago had 17-inch front wheels. And they were called Multistratas. They had touring mode, sports mode, urban mode, and enduro mode. The bike was designed for primarily for road use um, and you know very light off-road use. I think with the V4, they're trying to put the new Multistrata into a different category. They're trying to put it up against things like the BMW R1250 GS, the new Triumph. Um, Tigers uh, is really where they're aiming the bikes. If they kept with the 17 inch front wheel, I would have said they're aiming more at the BMW XR range rather than the GS range. But that 19 inch front wheel and just the feel of, of what they talk about in their video, in the press kit, they're really wanting a slice of that adventure market more so than, the, um, than that sports uh, hybrid market. So by going with a 19 inch front wheel, it's gonna make it more suitable for off-road use. If you buy the S model, you can specify it with laced wheels so you don't have to have the cast wheels. And there's a whole bunch of accessories out there for the bike as well. So let's go through some of the specs and details. The V4 engine's 170 horsepower. That's an awful lot of horsepower. And it dials it down if you're in enduro mode or in, uh, or in urban mode down to 115 horsepower more than useful. And on the old 1200, I actually really used to like urban mode uh, when I was stuck in traffic and pedaling around or it was raining. And I used touring mode more than any other. Um, if the traffic was light, uh, if you're out in the countryside, I found touring mode just the, the one that suited me the most. The sports mode was great if you really wanted to charge hard and go hard. And of course the uh, enduro mode, if the surface got loose, that was definitely the one to be in. In the new bike, um, when you choose each one, a whole bunch of settings change. Uh, they change more on the S than they do on the uh, standard model. And the S look really does look like the one to buy because it's got electronic suspension. Um, it's got self-leveling suspension so that when you load it up, it'll self-level, work itself out, and then it'll start adjusting it from there. You can then play with those settings through the, uh, the six and a half inch TFT display, which again is better than the one that comes on the standard model, which will be a five inch display. For touring, the S models uh, also has integration with your smartphone to give you mapping. On the standard model, you don't get the mapping integration. You do get music and calls, but you don't get the, the mapping. So I think the S model is going to be a better bike for the vast majority of people that are out there. And certainly in Australian conditions where you can go from, from really bad roads to freeways uh, easily in half a day, I think having that electronic suspension and, and those custom things are going to make it uh, a better bike for more people. So the standard model is coming in at 215 kilos and they're not saying how much the S model is going to add to that with the uh, extra bits and pieces. I'm guessing about 5 to 10 kilos but I don't really know for sure. Either way that's very good. Uh, Ducati is claiming about 10 kilos lighter than the, than the average models in that range and I would have said that's uh, pretty well spot on. In fact by the time you load these bikes up with a tank of fuel and oils and things like that, they can well be over 250, 260 kilos. So it's good that Ducati's targeted that, that weight um, as being a primary um, 
uh, uh, design factor in what they've tried to do and tried to build it at a reasonable weight. For touring efforts, 22 litre tank. Now this is another thing to me that points to having uh, more of a bias towards touring and off-road than, than sport. 22 litres is, is not huge by adventure bike standards. You know, the GS uh, adventures and things have 30 odd litre tanks, but it's definitely competitive with most of the bikes in that class. And it should give the bike a decent range. And I expect to do well over 300 kilometres on a tank on the new Multistrada V4. Another area they've targeted, which points to being a better touring bike, is pillion comfort and rider comfort. They've said that the bike is more suited to standing up on the foot pegs. So if you're riding off-road, that's exactly what you want to do. You want to be able to stand up on the foot pegs comfortably. They've designed it aerodynamically, not just for punching through the air better, but also for comfort. So I imagine that sitting in this bike, uh, you know, and literally you do sit down inside that seat a bit, although the seat I've said is quite flat, so you can move forward and backwards a bit to, to alter your riding position and be a bit more comfortable. But also the wind shouldn't be... Uh, blasting straight at you. The design of the fairing and the bodywork um, is designed to obviously protect you from the elements but also give you some venting so on hot days um, it shouldn't get oppressively hot. That's the hope anyway. Um, hopefully we'll get to ride one soon this summer and, uh, and be able to let you know. Another reason we think this bike is aimed at, at that real adventure market is improved um, ground clearance. So it's got more ground clearance than the old bike. It's still got lots and lots of suspension travel, 170 millimetres at the front, or wheel travel, 180 millimetres at the back, which is quite a lot and should work off-road really quite well. Now, the S model does have that sky hook suspension. Um, all the suspension's by Marzocchi, and on the standard model, it's fully adjustable. So that will appeal to, to some people who want to just have traditional sort of suspension and, and adjust it themselves, and they'll get that slightly lighter package. But on the S model be able to play with, the, um, play with the suspension settings through the instruments and you're just using your fingers to get that electronically adjusted. And I think it'll work really, really well, um, especially if you're going to carry a load, especially if you're going to be changing systems a lot, uh, changing the, the amount you carry. I think the, uh, the S model's going to be a better choice. The design of the bike looks fairly front heavy. It's got a big fairing, big tank, and then the whole design tapers towards the back and you know, there's a big gap between the wheel and the subframe. Now, the subframe is tre trellis, which is very uh, a Ducati trademark, if you like. But in actual fact, the, the main part of the frame at the front is a monocoque design. So it's a big, big unit that, that connects the, uh, the steering head to the engine. Uh, and the engine itself is a stressed member. And at the back, there's plates that attach the double-sided alloy swing arm to the uh, to the bike and then you've got the bolt-on uh, subframe at the rear for the for the rear seat and the luggage and pigeon passenger and that sort of thing so uh, in standard trim there's no panniers um, but you can get panniers you can get a top box you can get a tank bag and even the in the tank itself it actually has a pocket there for your smartphone with a usb connection and of course the the instruments and that things connect up through uh through bluetooth um, there's also mentions in the, in the press kit about Wi-Fi, but I'm not exactly sure how that all, all comes together yet. Again, when we test the bike, we'll let you know. Now, the electronics. And the big feature, of course, is the radar. So, Ducati's leaned on Audi. We presume being Audi owning Ducati. Leaned on Audi to come up with some technology for adaptive cruise control. So, there's a radar at the front that shoots out and picks up where the vehicle is in front. And you've got four settings that you can um, alter through the instruments as to how far behind that vehicle you're going to sit. And therefore, if you, it will then reduce the speed, it'll slow down, um, and it'll speed up again if you're depending on the distance to that, to that vehicle in front. Um, and then at the rear, it's got one that does um, blind spot detection. So if someone comes up and sits in your blind spot, a orange light will come on on your mirror, depending on whether they're on the left or the right. If they approach really quickly, it'll start flashing. And I think this is great technology. I mean, I don't understand why we can't have cameras in the back that then turn and then uh, don't have mirrors but have uh, little screens. I think that'd be even better. But um, 
this is actually pretty good technology. It sounds pretty smart. And if it works the way it's advertised, and it does on cars, it's been around for a while, um, I think it'll actually be a good safety feature. So I really, I'm looking forward to trying that again. Um, so that's, that's the radar. It's only available on the S and it's going to cost more. So some standard features. Let me read you some of the standard features from the different uh, levels of bike. So the, the standard bike comes with um, Ducati wheelie control, cornering ABS, uh, traction control, and of course it's all controlled by the IMU. The suspension's Marzocchi, I think I've already mentioned that, but uh, 50 millimeter forks up front, single rear shock of course. 320 millimeter discs with Brembo M.32 four piston radial calipers. So when you go up to the, uh, to the S model, you get bigger brakes. So you get 330 millimeter uh, discs and the uh, Brem Brembo calipers, and they're a level up as well. You also get Ducati cornering lines. So you get the bigger 6.5 inch TFT instrument panel, the hands-free ignition, um, Ducati connect for your smartphone and uh, with the navigation, Ducati up and down quick shifter, cruise control, and vehicle hold control. Now, a lot of those features you can go back and add into the standard one, but some of them you can't. Um, and if you go to the uh, Road Rider website, the story up there um, is going to tell you all about exactly what you can get and you know all that sort of stuff. And we'll, when we get pricing and things like that, we'll update it. At this stage, there's no local pricing. There's also a V4S Sport, and really that's just a different color scheme. Um, it's a, a multicolor color scheme and what they call sport livery and you get the acropovic uh, or acrop acropovic homologated carbon carbon fiber and titanium silencer now it's homologated so it will not be particularly loud might sound better it might be a little bit lighter but it's not going to be particularly loud and a carbon fiber front mudguard the s model comes in aviator gray and red and the standard model you can only get in red in 2021 now once you've uh, decided which base model you want you can get what they call trim packs trims once you've chosen which specification you like you can then add things called trims or accessory packs now trims are only available for the s and the sport s the accessory packs are available for all three different models and they all vary a little bit uh, now the trims are x factory when you order these if you don't order them as a trim with the bike you don't get them so if you want the radar you need to order it with the bike. If you want a heated seat, you need to order it with the bike. You can't order it later. Now the packs include things like, um, so there's a travel pack, which is panniers, center stand, heated groups and seat. There's travel and radar, which is all of those plus the radar. There's performance, which is the, uh, the carbon fiber titanium silencer and the um, carbon fiber front mudguard and an option to go full. So all of those options in one go. The accessory packs include Enduro, which is a radiator guard, crash bars, engine protector and spotlights. I'm not sure if they're spotlights or fog lights. So that's a bit unclear. Um, there's a touring pack, pannier sides, center stand, heated grips, urban, top box tank bag, and USB hub. I'm not sure how that's different to the standard one. I was under the impression there's one built into the tank and a performance, which is the uh, titanium silencer. For the sport model, only the performance and full trim packages are available um, there. And then the standard models accessory packs also, uh, they're the same, the accessory packs, you can't get the trims, but the accessory packs, except there's one extra, there's an extra one called functionality, which includes the quick shifter, vehicle hold control, and cruise control, which of course are standard on the S models anyway. So that just about sums it up. I think these bikes look like they're almost built for Australian conditions. Um, 19 inch front wheel is gonna work well on our terrible roads. Um, the, the, the V4 engine is gonna have good flexibility and good torque. Um, it's got a lower first and a higher sixth than the V4s that we've already seen. So it should be good off-road with the lower gearing and the freeways and, and highways should be able to cruise in top gear. Um, the V4 motor um, will really, really suit Australian conditions, I think. 22 litre tank makes it good. The fact that they've aimed at comfort is really good. And provided the bike works as well as I expect it to work, 
um, you know, in these conditions. Uh, I think it'll be a really, really good competitor to, in particular, the new Triumphs and, of course, those BMW GSs. I think it'll fit in really well into that marketplace. I'm, I'm, I'm no idea how much they're going to come in at, what sort of pricing. I would imagine something around thirty thousand dollars for the base model and thirty-five thousand dollars for the S model. But I've really got nothing to go on there apart from historical figures for for Ducatis. That's a fair bit of money, but you're buying a lot of motorcycle, a lot of technology, a lot of safety, and, um, and I think these bikes will be an awful lot of fun and very, very capable. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe, uh, like it. Make sure you check out roadrider.com.au and read the story. Check out the pictures we've got up there. And keep an eye on Road Rider for when we get a hold of a bike and we're going to test it thoroughly. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you again soon.